as a debt cancer, you're going to get paid by PDE. Mm. Okay. You don't pay money directly to, to the debt cancer. Yes. If you do, something is wrong. It's not make sure. Mm-hmm. Even 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 nodding. <laughs> even nodding. <laughs> mm. By virtue of saying, um, <laughs> okay, uh, are you David Mashavela? Yes. Yeah. We are calling you on behalf of this. Mm-mm-mm. Okay. All right. Um, do you have a moment to chat? Okay. That on its own, you've revived 100,000, you've revived 200K. You... Yeah, but I don't know. I'm reviving. <laughs> can, they, can they ask me, are you aware of such and such a debt? That's what NCA Act is saying. Remember, it's a rehabilitation process. Mm-hmm. So you cannot get out until you are rehabilitated. True. What is rehabilitation? Paying off all your, all your debts, debts. Except for the bond. Okay, so the bond went a low for swing. The bond, as long as you paid everything, mm. all you said they got the bond. You're good. King King David Studio Podcast. I have in the studio, uh, it, your job is, a, is that of a debt repair coach. I like that title. Are when things are wrong, almost like a traditional healer. You're helping people's souls. Yeah. <laughs> That's really at the heart of what you do, mm. a dead expert. We spoke before you and I about how you got into this type of work. And, mm. and I remember we decoded balloon payment in such yes. detail. Yes. And I thought it was just fascinating what we did. And, and I'm hoping that we can achieve the same. But today, what's something that I hear about all the time, and I, actually the advertiser advertised on my radio show related to it, but I still get dead review. I want us to, to, to break it down into finer details. But I see you've written books since the last time we spoke. Yes, that is the latest edition. Nine Steps to Fixing Your Blacklisting. Nightmare. Yeah, you had to say that. <laughs> Don't leave that to me. <laughs> Nine Steps to Fixing Your Blacklisting Nightmare. Yo, we all get caught up in it, eh? Millions of South Africans are. Yeah. Unfairly so. Unfairly even. That's what makes it even worse. So you're saying there are people who <clears throat> are blacklisted and they shouldn't be blacklisted? Yes. Millions of them. How do you get blacklisted and you shouldn't be blacklisted? You know you haven't been paying. You know, um, David, there is so much that our consumers don't know and understand about their rights yeah. in terms of consumer rights. There is so much that the debt collection industry is taking advantage of mm. uh, with the consumers um, and the banking industry. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, every day as we do the credit profiling, there is so much that we get to understand and see the exploitation of consumers yeah. in the credit industry. Um, and mind you, the credit bureaus are just the receivers of the information. Of course, yeah. And if the creditor says this is the situation about the account, they cannot dispute it until the consumer disputes it. Of course, of course. And for as long as consumers don't know or understand their rights, those negative listings, which are unfairly blacklisted, mm. will remain. Well, give us a typical example of someone who finds themselves blacklisted and they shouldn't have been blacklisted. For instance, you have settled your accounts, okay. especially the one that was handed over. You know, by virtue of it being blacklisted, it's because you defaulted. Mm. There's a negative listing around it. Um, what is a negative listing? Negative listing will say, it actually start with the first month of not paying your, okay. ac- your account yeah. according to the original agreement. Mm. So then they will list it as areas. Yes, you know, that we are familiar with. Yes. yes. Um, the subtle one will be late payers and uh. Uh, 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 someone who skips. But that goes behind the scoring. But the actual listing itself, which is very, mm. you know, evident there, would start with areas. So It's areas probably a month or two I haven't paid. Yes. yes. I mean areas. You're in I, areas. I've, heard, I've heard that phrase. Yes. yes. So as time goes on, you don't pay or don't settle your areas then they would take legal action, mm-hmm. which will now say, 
Hey. Okay, it starts with section 129 letter. Yeah. Hey, go to the debt counselor, do mediation, come talk to us. But that letter is, yeah, come. it's more familiar when it says come talk to us. Yes. So we can we figure this out. Yes. It does that letter does it come from the bank or lawyers at this stage? Usually from the creditor. Okay. The bank. Oh, yes, the bank or yes. at gas. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. But that does not mean the legal process has started. Mm. They're giving you an opportunity to rectify mm. whether um you talk to them, whether you seek assistance with either the ADR or mediator or the debt counselor. Mm. Failure to do anything regarding what is advising you to do within 20 working days, <clears throat> they have a right to proceed with the legal action. 20 working days from receiving the letter? Yes. So okay. from It can be technical. It can be technical. Because I haven't seen the letter. <laughs> I don't know that 20 days has started. Mm. Or they, they send the letter two days ago. It went to... A wrong address. It can be technical. I'm just mm. raising that. Yes. A lot can happen yes. in that 20 days. Yeah. I am not aware. Exactly. The letter was eaten by a dog. <laughs> You're not a dog. <laughs> no. Hey. <laughs> it used yeah. to eat my homework when I, when I was at school. <laughs> now it eats my letters, my legal letters. <laughs> Your dog lives forever. <laughs> Same dog. Same dog. <laughs> When I was in crash, still around. <laughs> but you hear me. Yeah, it can yeah. be technical. Yeah. Okay, sharp. Where are we now? You know, they will always say, we're using the address that you gave us. Okay. So you do not inform us that you've changed addresses. Mm, mm. So they'll either send it via email, you know, the latest contacts they would have of you, of yours. Um, some they would send via registered letter. Okay. But in these days, they send it via emails. Failure to remedy. What is what is remedy in this context? Remedy is to say, come talk to us, which necessarily does not work. It works in paper. It says yeah. they're in paper, but when you start engaging them, they say, this is what we want in most cases. Okay, okay. Or you go to the debt counselor to say, look, if you happen to be over indebted and the reason why you're not paying us, exercise your rights. Mm-hmm. Or go to the ADR, which is the debt mediator, also registered with NCR, to come and negotiate on your behalf. But an ideal scenario uh, is to go to the creditor yes, and have a conversation. With them. It solves it a lot easier. Yes. Where you say, I'm expected to pay 100 rands. I can only pay 50 rands. Mm. Some creditors agree to that. Yes. And extend your terms of payment. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yes, some they do. Okay. Some they take heart and they do. Um, <clears throat> if you are not getting through mm. um, with their terms and they're not willing to mm. hear your side of, of, of your story, your side of story, they would might proceed for as long as there's no payment coming through. Okay. So depending on how big or the processes of the that creditor. So mm. the banking the banking industry would probably have a collection department. Okay. Whereas other creditors would immediately hand you over to the to the collector. Yeah. Just deal with it. And it could be an independent collector. It can be. Who has a different target, different approach to things. Yes. Okay. So by virtue of that um the collector bought the debt. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> they do that? Yes. That's what they do. That's how they make money. So you you would owe, let's say, 12000 Yeah. They hand you over. To the collector. To the collector. And they buy these peanuts. They buy the debt. They buy the debt. It's like a, they call it a debt book. So you say, hey, we've got hundreds of Okay, yeah, that, that, that I've had, but I, it, I, it's never been simplified that yes. easily for me that they buy my debt for a lower amount than it really is. Yes. So is the, the creditor in this case saying, I'd rather get something than nothing at all? And then what hmm. they do is in terms of the accounting, they would claim a loss so that they don't pay it. Of course. Tax. Understanding. I understand it. Yeah. Um, so they sell the book, they sell the debt, then the collector do whatever that they do. So once it's handed over, mm. 
uh, it has gone probably through their collection department. They said, we are not winning with this person. They hand it over to the collector. So the collector will now start contacting you if they have your latest mm, mm. information. And they would have a different approach to mm. the creditor. Am I, am I correct? Yes. By approach, I mean, they're probably more aggressive because yes. they, they, they bought this debt. They need to, to make good on this debt. They exactly. need to make their money back. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, even by virtue of I've been handed over, my account is at the collector. That's old. scary. And some of them are attorneys. Yes. Yes. So we've got attorneys who um, as, um, do the collection uh, services. Mm. <clears throat> so the debt collectors, purely as they are, they would be registered with CFTC, Council of Debt Collectors, mm. and the attorneys, because they might have different uh, roles, mm. they would be registered with the, um, the former law society. Yeah. So they would do the collection with their own tactics, you know, sometimes threaten you, sometimes giving you an opportunity to come and talk to them and you mm. call them. And they don't want to hear you. Some they do hear you, you come mm. to an agreement. But then the thing is, going back to the unfairness of this, is that you might have paid the account with the, collect, with the creditor, but then the account still handed over. Mm. But then the creditor does not update the credit bureaus uh, that you've settled. The got account. you. Yeah. Or the collector, you made arrangement with them, mm. but they do not update the credit bureaus that you have settled the account. Because mm. is... for them, it's, it's an administrative yes. nothing. Yes. In your life, it's everything. It's but to everything. them, it's just, it, yeah, somebody exactly. has to just press a button somewhere. You see? Yeah. The second one, which is very, very disturbing, and I'm very passionate about getting involved in that one, is that, remember I said the creditor would write off the account. Mm. So if they write off the account after three years, they can write off the account any time, mm. maybe after six months or whatever. But if they write off this account after three years mm. of them attempting to, collect the money mm -hmm. and the collector buys the debt ideally what they should report to the credit bureaus is to say the account is prescribed meaning Kasetswana. meaning mm. is it over we've written it off it's a it's a bad debt yes it's a bad debt we've written it off and the credit bureaus must update it with the information that says it's prescribed. How does it affect me? Ooh. Because <laughs> it would. It would. I said it. You have you don't have to pay it. I can't pay. I don't have money. Yes. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Okay. However, what they do is as the creditor would update the account as closed. Okay. The matter has been completed. Yes. Yeah. Or they would leave it as areas. Okay. That's where now the unfairness is. Okay. It's areas. It's fine. We know we, we owed you. Mm. So they would not update it as prescribed. They will leave it as areas. Yes. They hook you. Why are they hoping you'll still come? Yes. Because now they are selling it, and in order for you to, for them to get anything, it must stay. It must be in areas. areas. Yes. yes. So they can't prescribe it because it still has some value. Yes. It's not completely yes. useless to them. Yes. They can still sell it to someone. They can still sell it, but the law says if you sell it after three years, it's illegal. However, they are justified though. It's their money. They've written it off. The point I'm making is you went to the shop, you bought that thing on credit. Mm -hmm. You struggled to pay <clears> it. <throat> some days you did, some days you didn't. Mm. Uh, and then you stopped mm. for a while. Mm. They send you letters. They did everything. At this point, it's not handed over. It's, it's in areas. Mm. At some point, it will be prescribed. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. However, it hasn't gotten there yet. Mm-hmm. They continue to look for their money. The point I'm making is, isn't it justified for this creditor to continue to look for their money forever? No. For as long as you've got a right. Because remember, there's a prescription act, mm-hmm. 68 of 1969. Mm-hmm. We also have the NCA Act. Uh, section 126B. Yeah. That one says you're not supposed to sell the debt. The debt. After, after three, three years. years. Okay. There's but can I, can, can I keep it open and not sell it? I'm seeing it from a position of the creditor. Of the creditor. Can I keep it open? The question I'm really asking yes. is you owe me though. <laughs> yes. I'm justified to want my money. Within three, especially if it's an unsecured debt, because we need to also be very okay, clear. Okay, let's clarify end. that yes. here while we have this opportunity. Um, it's it's not prescription has different mm. years. So the one that is most likely to be in this conversation, conversation yeah. would be unsecured debt, your credit cards, overdrafts, loans, mm. um, furnitures, home loan. Ho- not not necessarily home okay. loan. Okay. Um, I'm talking about the three-year ones. Mm. Um, <clears throat> oh, yes, because home, loan, home loan is different terms yes. anyway. Yes. yes. So the your car was repossessed over three years ago. You had that short form. That one can also prescribe. Okay. Um, so gym, you know, okay. store accounts, kind of Edgar's and yeah. the likes, yeah. like yeah. you mentioned. Okay. So those are the ones that within three years, once the three years have passed, they have not taken legal action. Meaning they did not. They've take, done nothing. They've, they didn't do the steps that you started yes. with. Yes. But if they try to do it after three years, that's when now you have a right to say, Mm-mm. "That's that. That's an old debt. That's an old debt. It's prescribed. I claim defense. Uh-huh. I mean, I claim prescription through prescription um, uh, act, mm-hmm. the date of 1969. If they contact you after the debt has prescribed, meaning the collector. Mm-hmm. Then the Section 120 NCA, NCA Act mm, comes into play. To say, no, 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 you are not supposed to buy it. In the first and when place. You are not, as a creditor, you're not supposed to sell it. But, but our lack of knowledge is what ends up, we end up in trouble there because we, we were not aware. Yes. Or we don't know this. We don't, conversation. Know this, we don't know this conversation. Got you. So now the collector contact you after five years, four, seven years, blah, 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 and say, yeah, by the way. Remember. Remember, you. You owe you, me. Yes. Yeah. We are representing this creditor. This debt is on our table. Mm-hmm. You need to pay us. And they will come with all sorts of tactics. Mm. And now because you're already in a, a blacklisted with areas, mm. Without knowing your rights, you would follow through. And once you acknowledge the debt, even 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 nodding, <laughs> <laughs> even nodding. Mm. But virtue of saying, um, <laughs> okay, uh, are you David Mashavela? Yes. yes, we are calling you on behalf of this. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, all right. Um, do you have a moment to chat? Okay, that on its own, you've revived hundred thousand. You've revived. 200k you... yeah but i don't know i'm reviving <laughs> can they can they ask me are you aware of such and such a debt that's what nca act is saying yes what is supposed to do is to say okay are you uh, david mashabala yes mm. we are calling we are so and so collectors representing representing this we want to give you an opportunity mm-hmm. to defend uh-huh. the prescription of this account I will then say, what is prescription? Yes. And then they will explain. Yes. To say, I said, Wait I'm defending. Then. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't happen that way. That's where we come in. So when we do the assessment for prescription, they said, no, no, no. He acknowledged the debt. I said, give me the recording. So you find the recording where we I simply recording. said, yes, it's me. Yes. And then we listened to the recording and then they said, we now, Good Life Money Master, mm. Rokile Bakhele said, you did not advise him. Yeah. You did, you're you supposed to give him an opportunity to defend. Oh, hell. And that was not offered. It, it, it never gets offered. <laughs> 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 but then, without knowing 
you know, the, your rights without going to the experts and everything, you would end up paying that debt because now you're making arrangements over the phone. Sure. The unfairness comes when the collector, the creditor has updated the credit bureaus after three years to say it's closed mm. or, uh, and they're, or they remove it. And they do that with the papers. They give a room for the collectors to relist it. That's where the unfairness comes oh, in. Okay, I got you. Because if they update it as prescribed, the collector cannot relist it. Mm. The collector, the, the credit bureau would say, Oh, okay. But is this it is for thing... this? But they, it's prescribed. Yes, it's over. Give me proof as the collector that the account is not prescribed. Uh, uh. And generally and there's no conflict. proof. conflict. Yes. There can be proof that it's not it can, prescribed. It can't. Yeah. You see? So that's why they would leave a room to say it's not prescribed, uh, it's closed, or they remove it mm, totally. Mm, yeah. So when now we do your credit report, they say, yeah. My debt is gone. I said, uh uh, wait, it's coming. It's in areas. Anytime it's yeah. coming. You're going to get a call. You're going to get a call. <laughs> yeah. Even if you don't get a call, they can just release to you. Jeez. <laughs> or you, and then you go and apply for a home loan and say, but who is this person? Who are these people? I've never done business with them. Then you start calling. You find out who are they. You call them. By virtue of you calling them, you are reviving. You're reviving. But I'm not, I'm not aware. Exactly. I am just inquiry. Now, it becomes difficult for us to defend it because you're the one who called them. What, how do I avoid that? Get an expert. To? Make, to do your analysis of your accounts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? The moment you want to buy or take credit, do a credit profiling with the experts. Mm -hmm. You see? Oh, wait a minute. Let's see what's happening here. Before I go there. Before you go there. But then but it, it, it's not common for people to approach an expert before they make yes. that decision. I like that thing. I want to buy it. Yes. I don't think of a lot of things. Yeah. I think about, uh, can I afford it? I can pay that. Yes. That's what we're thinking about. Mm. And then you apply and all that stuff comes up. You still have an opportunity to call you an expert, to yeah. say, what are these things before <laughs> I react? But we don't do that. Yes. Um, even that the credit industry has brainwashed us in some way okay. or reconditioned our mind in certain way that we just follow what they would prefer us to do. But in any case, so you apply for a bond, they say, no, you're declined. How? How am I declined? No, that old account from that creditor has been handed over to this collector mm. and that collector has blacklisted you. And I'm like, but that's an old account, mm. you know. So when you look for expert to say, okay, I've been blacklisted. I need an expert. What must I do? Mm -hmm. Then we look at the account. No, 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 no. This 80,000K has prescribed we would prescribe it formally mm -hmm. and then we get a proof. Then we go to the collective, the credit bureaus. Hey, please take out this Remove account this one. and update it as prescribed. Huh. Locked. But at this point, I'm already blacklisted. How difficult is it then to remove that blacklisting? If it's a prescribed debt. Yes, for example. And for us, it's very easy. We do it every day. What we do is we would formally prescribe. Mm. We know how, what needs to what needs to be done. We engage the collector or the creditor, both at you. Know. Mm -hmm. And then whatever feedback we get, we create the motivation and end end. And then we say, because we as 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 registered, we're registered with SR, we've got yes. that authority. We said credit bureaus, all of them. Mm. Here's the situation. Updated. Within 21 so this working is, days. this is a common event. It's a common event. But by virtue of millions of South Africans not knowing. Mm. Because once they say, oh, I'm blacklisted. Oh, I need to pay. Why? Wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe not this one. Not, not this one. Oh, yes. And I'm telling you, David, um, four out of five credit profiling that we do. That's, right? a, that's a high statistic. Complete your I'm thought. I'm telling you. Four out of five. And are blacklisted incorrectly. In, unfairly with those accounts. 
And you may find that 60% of the total debt mm. that's on average are these accounts. Let, let's, let's pause for a second and acknowledge the side of the, of the coin. Why would a company like a retail shop mm. sell you a product, you buy it on credit, you enjoy it, you don't mm. pay for it, you enjoy it, life carries on, and they do absolutely nothing to chase their money. Mm. Until over until after three years, mm. where it gets prescribed, you're in their records. Yeah, they see you. Mm -hmm. You don't pay it, but they're doing nothing about it. Mm. Why would they do that? You know, like before, because mm. we're talking about the accounts that prescribed over three years ago. Yes. before it was not easy to trace okay. people. I like today. Um, there's something that it really pains my heart. Mm of what's actually happening, how people get to be trapped into these prescribed dates. But let's pack it out, talk to it about, mm. about it now. Before, it was not easy for, for creditors to trace you and, you know, mm. um, emails and, 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 all, of and that. all of that. Now there's technology where it's very easy to trace. Mm. So accounts that are being defaulted now most of the most of these creditors, they don't lie on it. They don't they, leave you. They don't leave yeah, you alone. Okay. I would say e, 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 they are following through better now than before. Okay. okay. So these debts that um over three years over three prescribed, years, yes, they still exist in the system. They still exist in yeah. the system, and there's millions of them, and it's for millions of South Africans, and it's blocking South Africans to. Get access to the credit, mm. and it's one of the um, motivating factor for people to join that review. Mm -hmm. Got you, hundred percent. What is this thing that pains you? Okay, credit bureaus, XTS, Experian, and all that. Mm. They, you have a right to request a free credit bureau, uh, report once a year. Yes. Now. That this profit making companies, they are saying they will give you free credit report. Okay. Why do you? Why, Some of them they why say do you for do life. It like, yeah, okay. And they are profit making companies. They are not credit bearers. How do they make their profit? Exactly. <laughs> How do they make their profit? So, what they do is. By virtue of gi them giving you a free credit report, finer prints, mm. you, within the Poppy Act, you are going to, you, are cons you consent for them to sell or share mm. your information. Sure. When are you excited? I'm getting free credit report every month, right? You don't want to go to experts to do yeah. to pay a nominal fee to get a professional credit profiling and analysis mm -hmm. and strategy mm -hmm. how to dug Manage away this. how to dug away from this prescribed yeah. debt. So you get a free credit report, quick, you consent unknowingly or knowingly. Then they give you a credit report. Mm. What do they do? They sell or they share. One, your latest contact details. Isn't that you subscribe online? Mm, mm, mm. Yes. Email. Da, 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 da. Contact. Da, 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 da. Bam, bam, bam. Within a minute, your report is coming. Jeez. Okay? You're excited. Yes. You know, oh, I got this in for free. So now, they saw that your latest contact details, your emails, your, mm, your cell numbers. Yeah. And they also sell your credit information. Which is worth a lot, technically. It's not something that should be easily given yes. out. Yeah. Now, this is what happens. Shortly after receiving this free credit report, bam, bam, bam. You start getting calls from people who, who put people, who say, Hi, uh, David Mashabal, how are you? I'm fine. Uh, we see that you are over indebted, you are blacklisted. How do you know? This is my private information. Misrepresenting that review. Okay. 
How do they propose they're going to do that? This this scams, uh. right? They just find a way to to get people who are desperate. Isn't that they've got your information? Mm. They know mm. you've they got five accounts. They are blacklisted. Blah 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 blah. You've got a judgment. This and this and that. Mm. They've got your contact number. They've got your email. Okay, this is the debt review matter. They send it to these companies. Yeah. Then they call you. Then they say, you are blacklisted. We see you've got just a lot of accounts, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and we can help you pay your debts. You only pay us a small fee. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Hi, boys. Like manna from heaven. All this will go away. This will go away. Yes. Instead of paying, um, I don't know. Yeah. 10,000 per month, you only pay 3,000 to us. And, 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 and then we will handle the payment for you. You, blah, blah, blah. In a way, it sounds like a debt consolidation. It does. Like a loan. Yeah. Like we will settle. And then when are you pay us? When are you pay us? But it's a misrepresentation of debt review, <clears throat> of which is a debt management and rehabilitation program. Mm. So if you're over-indebted, they share the information with those companies. Yeah. If you are blacklisted, they know that. They share the information to say, they will have business relations and collaborations with the debt collectors. Of course. I remember One more. You've been looking for him. Like your question earlier said, why would the company not... Not find me or yes. not, not to stop looking yes. or do nothing? Yeah, we said, no, no, we've been we, looking for we him, found him for years. He Remember is. Remember his prescribed it for years. Ah, no, we've got his email, we've got his cell number. Yeah. Bam. Now you start getting calls and emails, so SMSs. They, they reactivate that. Yes. Even if it's possible that it's prescribed most of them are yeah but they managed to revive it yes but now they have our free credit report blah 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 after a couple of weeks you're getting these calls now i'm talking now about the issue mm. we've talked about the scams for the review we're talking about now the collectors mm -hmm. collector of phone nail mm. calls you Yes, how are you? Fine, Deva. yes oh, okay we're calling you on behalf of that account oh okay Got you. Jeez. Some of them will be clever. They will blacklist you first because they did not have your information to blacklist you. Now they have your credit report. Now they can go and blacklist you. Mm. <laughs> Anna. You, you understand? I completely get it. Yeah. Because I guess what matters in the story is access to information. Yes. Somebody needs to fish out your information. Yes. And once they fish it out, yes. they can do whatever they want with it because they know so much about you, particularly your debt, uh, your debt and finance realities. Hmm. They are able to see everything. It's like, okay, this is what's happening here. Yes. This one is a nice fish to catch yes. because it already has its own problem. But where is the scam in them saying, and I want you to explain it for, for us that in a way that we can understand it, in them saying, we will help you pay this debt. Where is the scam there? The scam comes from um, not following the proper signing up marketing. Mm -hmm. the, it starts with misrepresentation of debt review. Okay. First thing first. Two, for, as if it's a debt, consol debt consolidation. Two, it would sound again like it's a saving process. They would say, no, we'll save you 50% of your account. It's a misrepresentation. That's what you see. Most of them, they would say, uh, save 50%, save 60% on your debts. Mm. We'll, you know. It's not possible. It's not possible. Mm. Um, unless if it's a different form, the way you come to us, we would prescribe it. That's when we are saving you 60%. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. are canceling it. We are True. not putting you under debt review mm. program. That's, is that the only way to save? To save that 60%? By removing certain debts that are prescribed yes. and you thought you were still owing them. Yes. Okay. And then you would go under debt review with the impression that I have got all these debts. Mm. So going back to the collector now getting information from these companies, you, the, in exchange for a free credit report, you're going to revive how much? Sure. <laughs> 
10,000. Want to wake 20, up ghosts. 100,000 there. You know, <laughs> because I'm, they yes. start calling you, ne? And when they start calling you, financial stress, debt stress, yeah, pick up by the high blood, the mm, what, what, mm, the mm, high, high. Mm, not cheese. All of a sudden, sad. it's hot. Hey, mm. I'm over indebted. Mm. I can't manage this and I'm also blacklisted. Isn't that you got a free credit report? It tells you one or two of your accounts. True. Now you've revived these debts. The, you don't have any rights now because you've, you've acknowledged them. Yeah. Now where, where are you going to be channeled? Debt review. Mm -hmm. We are over in debt. The, the proper debt review. The proper debt review. Yeah. That way you might now, when I say, I'm over indebted, let me go and find out about this debt review. Hopefully you would land into a good debt counselor and everything goes well. <laughs> but ideally, at okay. the beginning, yeah. you were not, chances are you were not under debt. You were not, you were not so, over debt. You were not so bad. You were not so bad. <laughs> and we could have really, you could have taken an opportunity mm. to cancel or prescribe most of your debts. What is, and okay. date those debts at the credit bureau. What is the difference between debt consolidation and debt review? Debt consolidation is a credit agreement. It's another credit. It's another account, and it can only be provided by the credit or the banks. Okay. So, debt consolidation is to say you've got account, you've got a credit card, furniture account, loan, two loans, clothing account, and clothing account. Yeah. And the total of this amount of the balances thereof is hundred k. We as a bank, typically most of the um, the the banks are the ones who would provide debt consolidation. Mm -hmm. We as a bank, if you are to qualify according to, because we also there's also an element of reckless lending, you yeah. still have to qualify. Yeah, because I'm thinking, how do I qualify? I'm already in trouble. Yes. Okay, but keep going. Yes. So you also need to qualify for this debt. Mm. So we would offer you, we will settle this. Mm. Settle. As in, we're going to get five paid up letters. We, we will pay, pay these people. Yes. Directly. Settle the account. And then you owe us. Then you owe us. We'll one, pay one payment. Yes. Yeah. 100K. They pay 100K, uh, you know, mm. sub, um, individually, I mean, divided to all those creditors. Mm. You pay us this loan, we'll give you this interest rate. So this one's done. Credit paid up letters, we take, you, you can take them and update your credit bureau, say, we close in this account. It is not a program. It's, it's a, just another. It's another. Shifting the You're shifting debt. to the side. So Why, why, would, why would I want to do that? Because chances are there. The interest that is carried onto the bank is just as high. Yes. Not all that consolidation loans are bad. Some mm -hmm. of them are good. Okay. Because you might find that you've got so many in high interest rates here, and here you only have one. One. Yeah. You know? But the danger here is it's very easy again for you to go back and open other accounts. Ah. Because on this side I look like I'm good. Yes. But in reality, Yes. I'm a mess. You're, you're a mess. So they just bulk, they just shift this debt into this one that looks much nicer and more manageable. Okay. Because if you're to default on this one, it's five collectors calling you. If you default on this one, it's just <laughs> one, one collector. Guy. Yeah, you know, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier. Yeah. So the best or the better debt consolidation loan is when you've got a bond which has equity. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not saying it's the best, I'm saying the better. Mm -hmm. Then you can borrow against your bond mm. because the bond usually have a lower interest rate mm. um, and you have equity in it. True, there's value in the yes. property. So instead of going on a debt review, instead of you being blacklisted and, and, and if you've got an equity on your bond, borrow against it, settle these people and then once your finances are, pay more on mm. your bond. Mm. What, to reduce all of this. Yes. Do, do you know, this conversation leads me to, because we're talking about the machinery, mm. you know, the things. Mm. We're not talking about the people who make decisions. Because mm -hmm. at the end of it, there's a heartbeat <laughs> that, and a soul and, and emotions mm. that make these decisions. Hurry, 
I want that and I want that. Yeah. What do you find is is common amongst us as as people and South Africans yeah. when it comes to these moments of getting blacklisted? Like you can tell you're going to get in trouble, mm. but you're walking straight into it. You can tell you're struggling with these, but you're buying another. What do you find? You're buying one more thing. What do you find is at the heart of these emotions that we seem to be going through now? I think lack of knowledge, lack of financial literacy, because you, you, you're not financially conscious. Mm. You make financial decisions based on emotional. Secondly, not being able to differentiate between the needs and the wants, because mm. we tend to make the wants. Needs. Of course. And I want it now. Louis Vuitton bag the is Black a Friday, need. I guess. Black, well, but let me tell you, yes. a Louis Vuitton bag <laughs> yes. is a need. Yeah. I don't know which world <laughs> you live in. <laughs> in my world, it's a need. Yes. I, I, I can't I, carry another bag. It must be Louis Vuitton. You see what I mean? Yes. So you're saying we struggle with seeing it's reality. One of the things, you know, and we want it now. And then you don't have money now. Do I qualify? Hmm. You see, it goes back to one of the 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 the, the, the podcasts that say the difference between qualifying for credit and affording. True. So if the emotions and not being clear of what is important, what is not important, if you're not financially, if you don't have financial consciousness to say I'm boss of my money, um, you 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 also live to impress like you say Louis Vuitton is like a need it's a need it's not a I promise you someone identifies with that phrase yes Louis Vuitton bag is it like is. it has to be today for this weekend the dance you know the now the thing. now thing is also a big factor yes we don't want to wait that's where the credit comes in hmm. the banking industry and the credit credit industry um so and then, by virtue of that, we end up having what we call high um, income to debt ratio. Mm -hmm, of course. That's when we start going now to say, how did the debt review come to be? Mm -hmm. So around 2006, around that era, or shortly before that, we used to have two credit laws, the Ashery Act, um, 73 of 1968 and the Credit Agreement Act 75 of 1980. Okay. That's when the NCA Act was brought in to replace those acts. So those who are making macro decisions of the country, they sat down in the law uh, um, industry and said, we've got over three trillions of consumer debts or the gross debtors book mm. in South Africa. We need to do something. I'm tapping into economy now. Mm. So we need to do something because the consumers in South Africa have over 75% of income to debt ratio. What is that? Is to say, typically you earn 10,000. Mm. 7.5 of the 10,000 goes towards paying debt. What's that now going to look at 3.5? That's your take home. It's 2.5 actually. Yes. It's a lot less. It's actually yeah. 2.5. Yes. And now you 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 it's a question of um it's a disposable income. It's what we call household income. Hmm. So with 2.5 taking care of yourself and your loved ones, it's not enough. Mm -mm. You still have to buy grocery, transport, mm. school fees, and, 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 and. So the government and the, everybody those on the table said, how about now that this new act is coming in, the NCA Act, the beauty about that is that unlike other acts, credit act, it brings in consumer rights. Of course. Let's make debt review one of the consumer rights. Why? Okay, fine. Income to debt ratio is very high. We now, if it's that's the case, then 2.5 AU, you go to the store, 
instead of coming out with two trolleys of goods, mm. you're coming out with one, even half the trolley. What happens to the, all these businesses, big and small, who are producing goods and services that are in that supermarket? Mm -hmm. They struggle. Now we go back to that um, supply and demand, the, in, the mm -hmm. elasticity, of inelasticity, and then the equilibrium and, and, and. The profit margin, in simple terms now, the profit margins of the production of the country mm -hmm. is affected negatively mm. now company a has got five employees needs to cut to four to two yeah because production because i can pay yes the demand is not there i'm affecting yes you know someone's job yes yeah uncle joe Kuka, sit down, is fixing cars you look at your cars bumper is like ah, it's drivable i don't have money i will mm. drive it instead mm, of, of course Oh, I've got money. Let me go to Uncle John, fix my car. Uncle John's business is also affected today. Mm. Because more. Right? What happens then? High employment rate. Mm. Then it becomes another government issue. The grants, blah, 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 blah. Mm. The consumer basket, blah, blah, blah. You know? So debt review, the intention of the debt review was to say, let's try to manage this income to debt ratio mm. so that we we focus on the economic elements of the country and also giving consumers an opportunity yeah. to rearrange this original debt so that instead of taking of paying 7.5 towards debt how about we give you a right to say can we relook at this agreement combined? I only now pay you guys 4.5. I take home how much now? 5.5. 5.5 is better mm. than 2.5. I'm still owing the full amount. Yes. It's just rearranged differently. Just rearranged, extending the terms of Course. repayment. Is Was it is it consolidated? Similar to, a little bit similar to that bank consolidation. Is it in one place now? No. Okay, explain. I'm still owing that, 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 that and the other. Yes. The difference is? The difference is now there's a middle person, mm. that counselor registered by NCR, mm. who would represent you by virtue of you signing up and being declared mm. by the debt uh, in, counselor that you are over indebted mm. you've exercised your rights by joining that review okay let's open channel of negotiations with the debt counselor then they say okay this bank a instead of getting 500 how about you get 250 creditor two instead of getting a uh, 600 how about you get 100 mm. rand mm. blah 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 so that everybody can have a stake Piece of pie from the 4.5 now. Can't I do that myself? Why do I need a mediator? Why do I need <laughs> for me to go and speak to my people yes. whom I'm owing to say, I am owing you, there are 10 of you, I'm owing you 100,000 rands. Yes. I can afford this, I can afford that, I'm negotiating. Mm. Why do I need a middle person? It's something clearly that sounds like I can do myself. The middle person is just as human as I am. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that. Okay. Some people, they do. But what are the chances of them? Remember letter of demand section 129? They gave you that right. Mm. By the time you're knocking at the debt collectors, that section 129, in most cases, you did not honor it. You didn't pay. You didn't pay. You did not come. To negotiate. You, you are too late. You are too late. A little bit late because debt review also loan has got its own timelines. Okay. You can't go to debt review when the sheriff is there and say, Ah, okay. Hand over your car. Okay. We are repossessing the house tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So if you failed, if that failed, mm. take advantage of this right. Yeah. So that it also protects you. It makes these people to listen to you. Okay. 
I have a, yes, I have a mediator. Yes. Yeah. But it's not just about the mediator. You've exercised your rights. Okay. And it's a formalized and legal process mm. that mm. the government says, this is the process. This is how it needs to be done. Okay. So they listen to you and they listen to the, they're supposed to listen to the debt collect counselor. And, and, and now we're trying to balance this income to debt ratio. At least now you can go home, buy more groceries, pay school fees, and, 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 and. And if you happen to have a house and a car and so in areas, it's supposed to protect that from being repossessed. Okay. If it's done right. Yes. So the asset should be protected, especially if you apply sooner, not when the legal action is taken. So ideally, the debt review should be entertain before the legal action is advanced. Give us some of the important timelines. So there's debt process. Mm. It, it, for example, timelines related to how much time do I have from receiving a letter uh, to reacting to the letter. A letter of demand, for example. How much mm. time do I have for a debt review? You said even the debt review process has time frames. Give, give us some of those numbers. Ideally, 20 working days from receiving a letter of demand. Mm. But um, you can still apply for debt review, review even before the, sec the letter of demand. When for you as long just as look you at your life. Like, oh, yeah. As long as you look like, you know what? Go blind. Go, go blind. Yeah. And I don't have a plan to, to get things mm. sorted out right now. And I'm about to lose my car or my house. And I'm financially stressed, depression, blah, 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 school fees, and, 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 and. Mm. So <clears throat> anytime when you start realizing you're over-indebted, because over-indebted is to say the moment you realize, for it, the income that I'm earning is not enough to pay these debts plus take care of myself and my loved ones. So whichever way, because some people would say, no, 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 debit orders are going fine. But now every month they are borrowing from Peter to pay John, John to pay me, blah, blah, blah. That's what it's it is. still over indebted. So what other time frame matters? How long is what is the time frame related to a debt review process? So 21 working days from mm -hmm. letter of demand. Um ideally, pen and paper, mm -hmm. that's when you should be applying for debt review. That's mm -hmm. even what the letter says. Mm -hmm. After 21 working days, we can start legal action. Okay. In all honesty, after that 21 working days or 10 days, whatever that letter says, if you apply for debt review after they've taken legal action, they have a right to say we don't want to be part of the process. Really? They do. Huh. If the account is handed over to the collector, it's they a, have a right. They can agree to bring it to yeah. bring it here, yeah. but they also can say no. No. The law gives them the opportunity. Yeah. Remember, mm. they also have rights, the, the creditors. And of course. Yes. They have a right to say, no, no, we've already started with legal action. We don't want to talk to the collect to debt counselors. What pattern have you seen in that particular? But most of them, they do. They, they, they bring it back to this debt yes. review process. They would say, okay, fine. Yeah. Because... At the end of the day, it's better than nothing. The, At least we get 100, 150. Even though you are paying the collector now, mm. you're no longer paying the, the the creditor because the collector has already bought the debt. The debt. Yeah. The collector will say, okay, no, it's fine. But they have a right to say no. The, 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 the only limit is when now the, 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 the matter is advanced at the court there's a judgment. Okay. Right? Even with judgment, some of the uh, collectors, uh, not, not collectors, at this point is with the attorneys because the attorneys will be the one to mm. facilitate the judgment. Some of the attorneys will say, no, it's fine. We can put this account under debt review. It's fine. So they can do that They too. can do yeah. that too. But they are not forced. The challenge is with the assets. Okay. The car and the house. What is the challenge there? Now, there's a court order, warrant of execution. The sheriff is involved. 
Yeah. The court order that says what? Attachment of the property. What, well, that, what does that mean to the layman? To the layman is to say, we issue our summons. Mm -hmm. We give you an opportunity. The attorney sends you summons. We give you an opportunity to come to the court to come and explain your side of the story. Why you can't pay this. Why you can't pay. Uh. We've also given you an opportunity to come and talk to us as the collect, I mean, the attorney. Okay, fine. Now we're taking the matter to the court. The court make it an order to say, okay, since while you were given this, this opportunity, you've been given, been given the opportunity, section 129, blah, mm, blah, blah, mm, blah, mm. the summons. Now, this asset is no longer yours. Mm. You have breached the original contract. You failed to remedy the situation. So the judgment, the magistrate or the high court make a judgment to say, attach, mm -hmm. repossess. Sorry, that is now the legal way of repossessing the car. Or the house. Or the house. Yeah. So it's going on auction. So chances of the account being revived, being solved by debt review has long passed. Has long passed. Yeah. It will be a miracle for them to say, okay, it's mm. fine. Mm. Maybe for the houses, but it's there and there. Mm. But once the court order is out there, it's over. they would go full force because, in fact, they will benefit more. They will, they will recover their money quicker through the auction. Through auction, repossession, and then auctioning. Yes. Yeah. And they will, are in control now how much they want to auction. Because it's because the court has said it's no longer yours. Yes. So it's no longer yours. Yeah. Unfortunately, people would want to apply for debt review at that point. You, you don't have access to the consumer right at that point. You've lost it. You've lost it. You Remember, had a, you had a few opportunities. You had a few opportunities. Remember also as creditors, they also have, the law also works in their favor. Of course, of course. Even with the same NCA Act. Well, it it can't completely leave them on yes, the ledge. Yes, yes, yes. So that review might not work for you at that time. Let's go back a few steps. Where you talk about, I'm paying. When were you made the paying Peter to uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul scenario? Mm. It's common for me to have a debt that I pay every month, mm -hmm. and then when things start becoming difficult, I let's say I have I have a few debts I'm yes. paying every month. When things start becoming difficult, mm -hmm. I switch my payments. I pay this one this month, and the next one next month. So so this this debt will be paid six times a year mm -hmm. instead of a full twelve times. Mm -hmm. And the other one will be paid they'll, they alternate six times. Mm -hmm. And I do that. What is that? What is the implication of that? I imagine this is Black common. Listing. Really, but I'm paying. Remember, I'm I said blacklist is that with one month, just one month of 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 a default, you trigger the blacklisting. Jeez. And remember, blacklisting at the credit bureaus, they rock out every month. Every month's payment. Every month's payment. At what stage of the month? Let's answer it now. Mm. I missed the payment on the date that I agreed. Mm. Uh, I know, man, there's some money coming. Yes. Someone. <laughs> There's a job we're working <laughs> on. We're digging a hole somewhere. Yeah. And we're going to get paid. Let's wait. Uh, and I know, man, this thing. They call me seven days later. Mm. Send me a text mm. to say, we've noticed that you have struggled with that. Mm. Mm. Uh, if you've paid, don't worry. Yeah. And then when is this month concluded? Creditors would have a certain period of time where by this date they should have reported last month. Okay. Yes. Okay. So um <clears throat> so you find that by the by the seventh mm. of the next month, information is sent to the credit bureau to say he didn't pay. By the seventh. Yeah. You know, um it's it, possible. it would go with Industries, of course, it goes yes. with industries. Yeah. Some industries you would submit earlier, and 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 also type of of a credit agreement it is. Yeah, because some people may have a credit agreement that says I'll pay you on the seventh. Yes. So that means your first day of default starts from the seventh. Yes. 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 
Remember some of the ping on the 15th. Some That's it, 25th. Yeah. Exactly. And also goes back to the internal processes of each creditor. Some creditor, they would clear up their payments the same day. Some after a, a week. Some after two weeks. You no, know, they've got so many high levels. Of course. Whatever. Yeah. Only after a week or two weeks, they will say, oh, okay. Nah, he didn't, he pay, didn't pay for two weeks. Yeah, he didn't. Call him. <laughs> Send him a message. Yeah. We need to send it. Maybe for God. <laughs> and, and and that information is yeah. what affects your your credit score. Yes. That is exactly what credit score is. Mm. Is that those misses. Those when you misses. miss. When you yes. miss. Yes. When as you miss. And also, again, when you update that also, it's on the positive side now. Yes. When you start paying, when you start updating negative information, when you're canceling this prescribed debts, blah, blah, blah. You're updating your judgments and the likes. So you can fix the, I pay this month, I miss next month. You can fix it over time when now you start paying all the time. Yes. But, but by then, it has already affected your score. It has already affected your score. And it has, for the credit bureaus would also show your two years uh, payment history. Ah, that's so right. So they would say, ah, January. You know, shy. January after December. <laughs> he didn't pay. Hey. Uh, in June, he didn't pay. How many defaults should one have to get a bad score? One. One bad payment. It affects oh negative. my goodness. Did you hear that? <laughs> one bad payment. One bad payment can poop your score. It's like when... Yeah, I made a, made a bad example. You find people <laughs> being blacklisted for a debt year 300 rent. That you just forgot Not about. Just for one thousand. You completely forgot about. Uh, yes. So... Just so the blacklisting. So, you know, the, the, then the debt review was there to say, let's give people a, a second chance. Mm -hmm. Let's give them a second chance. So, one, they may have more disposable income, would benefit the larger picture and themselves. Benefit their household. Two, it will protect whatever assets mm -hmm. against repossessions. Um, three, it will just reduce, you know, psychologically. Mm, yeah. mm. Stakeholders that are involved in, in a debt review process, what are we, who are we talking about? That's a very important one. Let me just demonstrate to you because, you know, visuals will really help uh, people to really grasp what is this really debt counseling on, uh, and who is involved. DC. Actually, the, 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 the real name is debt counseling. Then it, it tends to debt review. Okay, okay. That's the common one. But yeah. the actual word, stakeholders. Who's involved? Mm -hmm. So you would have clients. Okay. Right? That's, that's me. Yes. I'm that's the me. one in debt. Yes. Cool. And then... We would have the DC. Mm. DC is the debt debt counselor. Yes, the middleman. The middleman, mm. and the DC must be registered with NCR. Mm. The regulator. The regulator. So, with the regulator, now, ideally, I would prefer the communication, the trigger of the communication to come from the client to the DC. Cool. Most cases, when it comes from the DC contacting the client, it's a bit shady. How did you get my client, my details? Mm. Going back to what we've spoken earlier, how did you know I'm over indebted? Yes. You see. So ideally, the client should say, okay, based on whatever the DC is promoting themselves, say, I need this in thing. Let me contact them. True. The, the, the DC is on, yes. on radio and so yes. forth. Yeah. Yes. So the NCR also as a regulator, we would have what you call PDA, okay. Payment Distribution Agents. Who are those? These are the companies registered by NCR where they are distributing the money they receive. From the client. From the client. Why are they part of NCR? For regulating. Okay. Clients never pay debt counseling fees to the debt counselor. 
That's why it also goes back to misrepresentation that we will pay your debts. Mm. No, 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 no. You are still paying your debts. But I'm not paying it to the debt counselor. You're not even paying to the debt counselor. You are paying your own debts mm. to your creditors. Just like before, the only difference is now the money is channeled from these guys who must also be registered with NCR. Got you. All right? And there's four of them. Mm. So if your debt counselor is not using any one of these, it's a problem. Okay. You've got hyphen. Mm -hmm. We've got IPDA. They used to be DCM. Mm -hmm. We've got, there's one, two, three. We've got uh, um, uh, collect, collect net. Mm -hmm. We've got DC partners. Why are they necessary in the picture? Very important for the regulation and 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 um, um, compliance in terms of distribution of clients' money. Okay. So when they are regulated by NCR, then the NCR can regulate them to say, okay, client is paying six thousand every month to you as this PDA. Mm -hmm. Are you making payments according to what the debt counselor is? Instructing okay. you. Okay. At least there's one or four places where this can be yes. reviewed properly. Yes. That it's operating okay. Yes. Okay. So your debt counselor will sign up with either one of this. Got you. Right? Wh who, why would uh, my debt counselor prefer one over the other? It's just a business okay. decision then. Yeah. But ideally, they should do the same thing. Mm. Some would have better technology, blah, 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 communication, okay. you know, or customer service. Over and above that, these PDAs, they must have what you call DC um, systems. Mm -hmm. So this will be the internal system that that counselor uses to communicate with the PDA, mm. also communicate with... The creditors. Here we will have creditors. Mm. And I will also say collectors. Mm -hmm. The people you owe. Yes. And they can come in the form of, of the shop you went to. Yes. Or where your credit was handed was over. over. Yes. yes. Right. Um, so client PDA systems. And then we also have Bureaus, credit bureaus. Okay. What is their role? That's your XDS, Experian, TransUnion, and Experian is CompuScan. Okay. Yeah. CompuScan. One company. Mm. TransUnion, and we've got Vericred, Vericred. Right. What is their role in the picture? Their role in the picture is to say, client, you applied for debt review. We know we do not want you to take um, credit anymore because we are rehabilitating you. Got you. We so don't they, want to overburden you. They stop me from from taking more credit. Yes. So once I activate a DC. I technically activate Bureau yes. to say, I am busy this side. Be aware. Yes. And your knowledge should stop me from doing this thing, yes. from getting credit at this but stage. But it's the debt counselor who informs them. That's the point, yeah. Yes. So he, the debt counselor uses the DC system to communicate with this, mm -hmm. with that, and also with these guys. And then we've got legal. Because mm. uh, the courts must know that this is active. Yes. Yeah. Remember now, debt review, it's a legal process mm. under the NCA Act, uh, Section 34 of 2005, and as a, as, a, as a consumer right. So the legal guys is to say, fine, we're negotiating. Let's protect everyone. Okay. Yeah. We are protecting the client from this people to 
continue demanding more money, whereas this program is working. We're protecting the client from these people from harassing them and, and, and. Mm. We are also protecting them mm. to say, if you agree to pay 6,000 or 4.5, let's go back to our um, example, 4.5 every month to be shared by these people, you also keep your word to it. Sure, got you. Yes. So now the legal, uh, we have attorneys. Mm. And we also have NCT, the tribunal. This is a tribunal. Okay. What is its role? Okay. If the DC is making negotiations, mm. pro- we call them proposals. If any one of these do not agree, do not uh, or decline for whatever reason that they may be, or they think banally case. Mm, a stronger case. A stronger case. We can, yeah. Are about 600, are about 700. Got you. Yes. Does then, that happen often? Yeah, in most cases it, okay. it happened. Yeah. Even though we've got what you call moratorium rule and that would guide the debt counselor and say, look, let's have a moratorium rule that would bring everybody at least to a certain level of agreement. Okay. To say, if it's a bond, at least 60% or whatever. So the attorney now will go to the court. It's going to be a typical court proceeding and then the magistrate will rule out to say, I win. Mm. 700, I, she, you can't afford it. Oh, oh. Or, or the magistrate will say, how about 650? Please. Please. They, I mean, really, you have, it's been three years in area, so two years. Yes, yes. Yeah. A, 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 a lawyers are not cheap. Who's paying who here? The client. But I'll, I'll get to that okay. part. I'll, I'll also do something of this when I'm taking out through the process. Mm. Yes. So, if everybody agrees, it is of best interest if the debt counselor, mm. right, approach the tribunal. It's okay. quicker to say, everybody agreed. Mm. Oh, okay, the tribunal will issue the order to say, oh, no, it's fine. 4.5 it is. The DC has been negotiating for me uh, with the creditors. Mm. And then the DC is able to rush quickly to the lawyers to say they have agreed. Yes. Go and, and finalize it in court. Yes. Okay. Oh, one of them or two of them, it's it's not mm. uh, it's, it's not make sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got you. So let's go to the court uh-huh. and get this thing over and done with. Everybody gets protected. Is it possible that you don't need the court in this process? No. By law, it should end up here. Okay. Because now once you've got the order, everybody's protected. Got you. Nobody would, it's supposed mm. to uh, step on other one's toes. Does it ever happen that with all that, with the order and everything, I am, I continue to struggle to pay? If you struggle to pay, you have an issue that you are not... Uh, sticking to your side of the of the order life just got worse yes so the order will remain mm. dc there's nothing that he or she can do then it, it kind of have a fallout mm. all right um whenever you feel like you want to go back you can go back and revive the relationship but the dc must inform Everybody that you are no longer paying. I'm struggling. You are struggling. But they still want their money. Everybody still wants what's due to them. Yes. Now, um, these guys, they can terminate. The collectors. Account. Yeah. They can say, we no longer want this account under debt review. We are de- terminating it. We are proceeding with legal action. Okay. We want to go, or we want to go back to original okay. agreements, blah, 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 blah. Got you. Even, even if there's an order in place. Because at this order. stage, there's an order. Yes. But the order, the client cannot live up to the order. He's the one who's in breach. Yes. Not them. So they can then take action. They can then take Got action. You. Got you. Okay. So these are the, um, the stakeholders. In so the when, you, when the clients apply for debt review, what is important to know is, to, one, is your debt counselor registered with NCR? Two, are they using any one of this payment distribution? If not... Something There's a manga, manga there. Yeah. 
Um, and How do it, I prove that they are using any of those? I, I have a right to ask. You have a right to ask. And I have a right to ask to check if they're registered. Yes. So when you go to the website, mm. NCR website, <clears throat> they've got a list of registered debt counselors, okay. registered PDAs, mm -hmm. yes, and registered cred uh, creditors. Okay. Yeah. Got yes. you. Which is, that's a lot of people. There's a lot of them. Yes, yeah. Yes. And they also have a list of deregistered debt counselors, ah. uh, lapsed debt counselors, um, voluntary lapsed. How does know. how does a how does a, a, a debt counselor lapse? Um, if they're not compliant. Okay. Then they, they can lapse or even be deregistered. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, some they voluntary say. We no I, longer want yeah. to be in this business. Got you. Yes, but they still need to be declared and it be a public information. Okay. Yes. So these are the things that clients need to be aware of. Mm. These are the um, stakeholders. Makes sense. So the 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 DC will also use the system to 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 inform these guys mm. that you are under debt review. Now. Let's take it one step further, the process. Okay. Which is very, very important, Mdeva, because sure. What does what does it entail? Because I thought so far I get it. And you're saying there's 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 a step by step process. Yes. By virtue of most debt counselors, remember as stake, as stakeholders, if I, before I go back to the process, mm. each and every one of them can create a fallout mm. ex except for these ones. Okay. G give an example of a fallout. Well, fallout one, I can't live up to my debts. Yes. Fallout two? The debt counselor, not one, being ethical Okay. in doing business. Like we talked, they scam you, they sign you up mm -hmm. without your consent. Um, they don't explain the process, which I'm about to explain it to you. Um, they, they, they are not. They, they are crooks. They are not registered with the NCR, or they are not using any one of these, or they are overcharging and and and. They or they are, or they, are, or they are out of business. Or they are out of business, mm. or they are not following the proper process. So if anybody, any one of these can create a fallout. That's why the debt counseling at this point in time is one of the tarnished industries. Mm -hmm. Creditors, they can also, they play a huge role in tarnishing the industry, most of them. In what Rather, way? One, you also understand it better when I talk about the process. Some of the creditors, they can contact the client and harass the client and say, we are not getting the money in the first two months. Even if even if this process is active. Yes. Or they say, no, 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 no. You are paying us less money. We are not happy. And they're calling you directly They're now. calling you directly. Or they're just not willing to cooperate with the debt counselor, submitting documents mm. and end. Mm. Or proceeding with the reposition of cars, hey. whereas they're getting the money from hey. the debt counselor. Okay. Harassing the client. And that has created a lot of friction between the client and the debt counselor, especially if the debt counselor did not explain the, the process right from the beginning to the client and warn mm. the client that these people, they have their own, them, they have their own behavior. Yeah. And uh -huh. they, you can expect this, but when this happens, calm down. I'm just here. Know, just know that it's their trick. I'm here. I can help I'm you. I'm here. For as long as you don't default. Of course. Of yes. course. And for as long as he or she does his work accordingly. Yeah. These people have no power. Talk about default. I default once. What happens? Now. Some money is coming. Yes. You know that. Yes. Yeah. Some yes. money is coming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Defaulting once. Yes. I wanted to explain that with the process, but let's let me, go. Let's go to it if you want. Let's let's go to the process. Yeah. Then then note this question. Yes. I default once and then I fix. You fix. Because because life happens. And also and also I, I've just reduced it 
Yeah. I didn't remove it. <laughs> so my life is still the same, you know, yes. and suddenly there's something happened. There's a death in the funeral, in the funeral mm. or there's a death in the family. Mm. Mm. Okay. So. Dead review process. Dead review process. Hey, <laughs> we are learning today. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we are learning. <laughs> I'm Deva. Why is it this dead review thing is a sore thumb in the, in the country? Yeah. People are crying. Um, the industry itself is it's is tarnished, mm. and we get a lot of complaints. And people, when they dead review, say, "No, no, 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 no! Don't tell me about that thing." Let me tell you what I hear often: that it's difficult to get out of it. Mm. That's what I hear often. Mm. Where is the difficulty? The removal of dead review. Remember, once the rehabilitation program. Mm. And if we had to go back to who is it for and who is it not for, mm -hmm. that review is not for people who are unrealistic about their finances. Yes. It's not for people who um, do not have a good financial discipline. And what do I mean by financial uh, uh, um Discipline. If you are now have an opportunity to go take home 5.5 instead of 2.5, but you want to live like you are taking home 10,000, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. review will not work for you. Yeah. You will have to change your ways. You would have to change your ways. Yeah. Um, if, if, if you are not realistic, one would say, Hi, Bo, I'm under debt review. Mm. I'm paying rent for these guys. I want to buy my own house. Okay. <laughs> well, you can't though, because you're under debt review. No, 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 no. Too many. I want to buy my house. Okay. I'm wasting money paying the rent. Yeah. Mind you, the reason you're able to pay the rent every month is because you're under debt review. Okay. That's why you can afford it. You can afford it. Because mm -hmm. debt review, debt review has rearranged your stuff such that it made some money available. For you so, to be able to rent out. So suddenly you think, I have mine. You have mine. It's not only rent. It's a lot of other decisions. Other things like, <laughs> this is what we get as the common thing. Um, I was label. Uh, I went under debt review meaning a year ago and I didn't find it working for me. The debt council, there's always a reason behind it. The debt council, I didn't do this. And, and, and most of the time, they are not in part of the problem. Mm. Is the debt counselor, blah, 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 this and that, 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 that. And now this thing has blocked me. Yo, that's why I was saying, yes. I can't get out. Yes. And I, I, I can't do anything. Uh -huh. uh, I want to get out. Okay, let's pause. Mm. Dev, I'm telling you, this is, we have a lot, a lot of work to do with that kind of mentality on its own. Just, just sentence A. I, I want to, to explain getting out yes. with this process. Yes. Getting out, mm. remember, it's a rehabilitation process. Mm -hmm. So you cannot get out until you are rehabilitated. True. What is rehabilitation? Paying off all your, all debts, your debts, except for the bond. Okay. So the bond went a low for swing. The bond, as long as you paid everything, mm. all you said they got the bond. You're good. Even if there's a court order. On the on the house. On the uh, yes, on the, on the bond. bond. Yeah. Even the, the this there's a court order. Yes. You can still get out. Okay. Not a problem. Yeah. The problem is you want to get out, you have not settled your accounts mm -hmm. or all of your accounts. Mm. It's one thing to want something, it's another to afford. That's it. You have no idea what I want, eh? Ooh. <laughs> so <laughs> that's when you say it's difficult. Mm, mm. But we'll get but, to but, the but, part. But, but, I will but, explain but, that yes, in detail. Yeah. That what does NCR and the law allows okay. in order for you to get out? True. They don't hold you back. They don't want you to... To stay. Unnecessarily so. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. It's important clarity that. So the debt review process. Okay. So it's client. Mm. You've got a client. That's me. 
Yes. I have a debt. You've got a client. Or I have debts. You've got debts. And like I said before, I prefer uh, you contact DC. DC. Can you see where this arrow is? Mm -hmm. It goes to the DC. It's important that you are the one that who calls, makes that not the sense. other way around. Very if it, important. If it's the other way around, there's something fishy there. You approach them. I think I'm over indebted. This is my story. I need help. Can you help me? Mm. Oh, okay. All right. The DC must, one, explain the process to you, the one that I'm going to explain to you, tell you that this is the situation, um, and then do what we call an assessment. Yes. So the DC must form 16. It's a statutory document mm. that says, we give you this completed let's do assessment. Hmm. Assess what is form 16? I thought form 16 was assessment. Mm -mm. Yeah. Okay. I hope my spelling is right. Anyway, assessment also combined your credit report. Mm -hmm. So they must tell you that they will get your credit report. Got you. All right. Again, let's help me out. What is form 16? Form 16, form 16 is a statutory document that says you are making an application to be to, to be reviewed for debt review. Okay. I'm so, not signed up yet. I'm just starting. They, when they give it to you, you're not signed up yet. It's supposed to be like that. Even after I've completed it and I've handed it in, I'm not signed up yet. No. They will take it in. They mm -hmm. give it to you. You complete it. Mm. When you complete it, they take your, your credit report. Of course. They do that. They These, do that. It's part of the process. It's part of the yeah, process. Of, of, yeah. They must say, okay, Dev, you are over indebted. Mm -hmm. But they can also say, no, you're not. You think you are, but it's not so It's bad. not. That's what I encouraged earlier to say. People end up going under debt review with this old and prescribed debt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Irresponsible. I hope you give me an opportunity to say it like it is. A responsible debt counselor, now I think I need to keep emphasizing that, a responsible debt counselor, when they're doing the assessment, they should be able, one, to pick up prescribed debts and say, mm. you are not even debted. This can be cancelled. Two, they should be able to pick up reckless lending. Yeah. For number. Mm. Three, they must be able to declare whether you are over indebted or not. A responsible and ethical debt counselor, if they see her, no way, no man, you are not more Push up. Push up. Yeah. I'm rejecting your application. You are not over indebted. You use the phrase responsible over and over again, which says there are those that are not responsible and they are likely to say, come, I will. I will uh, help you out. One call equals to say. Of course. One inquiry say. Inquiry say. You see I what I mean? I want to reject them. And, and, also, and, and also you find that I just hired my nephew, uh, Tato. He receives the calls. He's not even a qualified debt counselor. Can you call center agents? He's just, yes. Yeah, yeah, he's just signing up people. Yes. He doesn't care. And I'm going to measure him on his performance of how many people he signed up. Exactly. That's why most of them, they've got these call centers. And the NCR says the debt counselor himself or herself is the one who's supposed to do this. Whoa. But no, some, most of this, some there's, of them. There's people in the office. People in the office that are the one who's doing these whole things and they're just following the processes. And inquiry hmm. equals to, they will just even make up as, Mm. That you create are a wor uh, create a worse picture than the it worst really is. picture. That's bad. So if you are not over indebted, they must reject mm. your your application, mm. right? And just send you away. Yes. And say, don't worry. And inform NCR to say, ah, oh, he's not over indebted, or the situation isn't, and just decline. All right. Mm. In fact, at this point in time, so now. They do the assessment. If they found that you are over indebted, mm. you need to agree. 
say, okay, fine. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. By virtue of you signing Form 60. What step happens after? So now you are declared declaration. You're declared over indebted. Yes. If I just quickly explain something, the counseling aspect of it. Okay. Therapy is a, we've got a problem in the past. You are here. Let's help you go forward. Mm. Coaching said, we meet you in the, tonight, today. Let's help you move forward. Let's bring out the best out of you. Mentoring said, I'll hold your hand. Mm. I'll hold you accountable. Mm. That's mentoring. Counseling, Yona, is to say, hey, there's a trauma. This is it's incidental. Mm -hmm. Let's move fast. Let's interview. There's a problem. Mm. Right? But here is in the essence of finances. So this process, once you're declared over indebted, within 24 hours, the debt counselor must report to everyone. Remember, somebody might be having an issue with car repossession, blah, blah, blah. So let's act quickly. When you say everyone is all the creditors, creditors. Yeah. And NCR. So it's treated as an emergency. Sort of. Yeah. If you are declared over indebted. Over indebted. Yeah. If it's done, the assessment is done properly. Because we want to save you and protect your assets mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from anyone who might want to repossess your car illegally and and, and. so now this is the now it starts being the communication between you and the that counselor. Yeah. At this point, most the only fee that you can pay is fifty rand for credit report and 300 rand for doing the assessment. But most of these debt counselors, they don't charge upfront fee. Okay, why? That is the only amount that you can pay. The at this stage? At this stage. And if it's free, you should take it as free. As free. But, but clearly, they might want to charge it at some point of the process. That's why inquiry, say, inquiry, say, yes. inquiry, say. Got you. You got me where mm -hmm. I'm going, mm -hmm. yes. And if it's rejected, you know. You paid 350, life carries on. Life carries Even on. better, you thought you were bad, you're not bad. You're not bad. Mm. So you're over indebted. So now the DC must use the DC system, right? Okay. Then they inform creditors. Mm. They inform NCR. Mm. They inform a bureau? That you have applied for debt review. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to circle this one. Okay. They sent what we call Form 17.1. Okay. That's the DC. They're working now. Yeah. It, it involves a lot of admin, mm -hmm. this, this, mm -hmm. this, this uh, profession. Hey! This client is under debt review. Mm. Stop all your debit orders. The instruction to say, stop all the debit orders. Everything, I'm the middle person now. Everything comes to me, mm. to, to us, the organization. We are changing the play field now. The client has exercised his rights. And does this part of, this, of the process also include negotiating? The we are payments? not at the negotiating as yet. Okay. We're just informing them. Okay. All right. So we're informing them and we're saying to them, uh, stop debit orders. Hmm. Hmm. That would be so great that they would stop forever. Most of them, they don't. Whoa. Remember I talked to you about <laughs> this. Not mm, they, have, they have their own behavior. Yes. Most of them, they don't. Yeah, but. Then... The client will be told here, actually, to say, um, we work with this PDA. You need to go to your bank mm. to now create a new debit order. Now, instead of you paying 7.5, going back to our mm -hmm. scenario, you 
estimate at this point. It's just an estimate that you should be able to buy 4.5. Yeah. Right. So now here, it's, it's an estimate um, reduced installment. Or they call it DC contribution. This is a conversation between client and, and DC. Yes. Yeah. Hey, um, I've adjusted, but I call it, I call it DC now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. From 0.5 to yes. 4.5. Mm -hmm. It's an estimate. Yes. Right now. I agree we have not done the final. Of course. We haven't negotiated. Yes. Yeah. So, debit orders. You guys must stop the debit orders. Everything to us. Okay, we are three here. <clears throat> now, what the creditors must do, uh, uh, it's the uh, creditors um, or collectors <clears throat> to DC. They must send what we call COB. Okay. It's a... Uh, Certificates, certificates mm -hmm. of balance. What does that mean? They say, oh, yeah, we've got this client. We know this client. Mm. He owes us. <laughs> the balance is 10,000. Okay. This is the interest Here is. rate. Yeah. Here's the information. Or the collector will give us that information. Got you. Cool. Ideally, these people, they must channel these clients from the normal client process to their debt review department okay. or section, mm. then they should be able to send the DC this. Okay. All right. Now the DC, this is for the DC. Let me just make it a bit clear. The DC to the creditors. Now the conversation continues. Send what you call Form 17.2. Mm. After that's receiving that's the actual information now. Now they have the From the horse's mouth. Yeah, that, that this, this guy owes us. This owes us. Yeah. We are now saying officially, let's carry on. Yeah. Let's do this thing. Let's protect the clients. Let's see how we can clients repay you and end. Mm. Mm. Right? It, it's a conversation. From here... It, it, it continues again. Uh, let me say creditors. Creditors. Now, what we're doing here is the proposal. Who's proposing to who? The debt counselor is proposing to the creditors how much uh, should the client... Hey. This follows having discussed with the client. Yes. Yeah. We are working on this 4.5. Of course. You're course. saying, he's got 4.5. All of you must share this 4.5. And the thing about this is, if clients have got five creditors, everybody's transparent now. Okay. Creditor A will see creditor B is going mm. to get this. Okay. So it's a very transparent. Okay. Everyone can see be, what's happening. Yes. Yeah. Got you. It's supposed to be a trans very transparent Um. Mm. A platform now. So, yes, fine. The proposal, they can accept. They can decline. Or try to negotiate harder. Or try to negotiate harder. Okay. Okay. Now. Is that an easy process? Do you, as DCs, overcome it easily? With time, it becomes easier when you become experienced as a debt counselor. Okay. You've got systems and everything in place and you build relationships. But they can be picky mm -hmm. for no mm -hmm. apparent reason. Okay. You've exercised your right. You've got a right to reduce as long as you apply during the time frame. Mm -hmm. All this should happen within the first month. And what are the fees? Yes. Okay. Because the, the, the only person Mm. naturally, mm. who pays is the client. Yes. Yeah. And note, the client is 4,500 rands a month. He only owes, he has 10,000 rands salary. Yes. He can afford 4,500 rands. Yes. So the income 
is 10K. Uh -huh. Right? Before DC debt, debit orders we take is. Uh, after DC. After DC, debt should get 4.5. 4.5. So, proposal. Hey, it landed on only 4.5. Let's talk. Mm. Everybody must get a share. Okay? At this stage, they we all agree. agree. We yes. agree, we agree, we agree, we agree. Now, how did the client, how can the client pay 4.5 when it's already over and dated? Mm. That's the big question. The law says, or the process of debt review says, the first two months. Mm. That's why we instruct them to stop debit orders. Client, I agree now we want to shuffle the money around without mm -hmm. the need for the clients to go and borrow money mm, mm, my mm, mm. so that they can proceed with this thing. Yeah. What happens is now, the first two months, month one, the debt counselor must get paid. The 4.5 becomes the debt counselor. NCR has got the guidelines that how much the fee should be. Okay. The maximum that the debt for a single application, you're not married. Mm. For the single application, um, the maximum is 8,000, excluding VET. So if your debt counsel is registered for VET, mm. they would charge VET, single application. Mm. But if your contribution, this, this, mm. becomes... 4.5. That's the only money that the DC must get. Not the 8. Not the 8. Okay. If we've got client 1, eh? mm. if client 2 is a higher income, his debts were 30,000 per month, he goes under debt review, they say, no, 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 you can pay 14,000 per mm -hmm. month. Mm -hmm. Right. The first month from that 14,000, a responsible debt counselor can only deduct maximum of 8,000 if you're single. Okay. The rest must go to the debt. Towards the, the collectors and the yes. DC, or rather the uh, creditors. A, a responsible debt counselor would say, no, 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 no. There's this smaller an account that we can settle the first month. Let's do that. Let's settle this. Oh, the car is in areas. Let's at least put this money towards the car just to shut off these collectors. How much time? You said two months. The first two months. Yes. It, you're saying that first two months is, is a flexible space. Flexible space. It's like we are negotiating. I can't be paying you while we are negotiating. I'm negotiating. Let's, yeah. Is a Let's pain. stop. Let's stop first. Let's yeah. come to an agreement. Okay. But should there be a surplus after, after the debt council has taken his fee of 8,000 and there's a surplus. Mm. Why not settle one or two or reduce the, the areas there and there? Gotcha. Or put it in a bond. Whatever is urgent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or would make a better financial decision at that point in time. Who as a client are you sending that money to? Remember, the in, the, PDA. In, in the past, ah, in the past, I was yeah. directly paying to my yes. creditors. Yes. So now, who physically am I sending? Because it stopped, I guess. Yes. Yeah. So, so let, let's start with the first payment. The, the 8,000 rands that goes to the debt counselor. It goes to the PDA. 4.58 goes to PDA. Okay. The debt counselor say, expect 4.5 from Dev. Ah, the client. 100%. This month ends. Mm -hmm. End of November. Mm hmm when you get that 4.5, this is how you must distribute it. The 4.5 comes to me. Okay. Right? Okay. First, first payment, it comes to me. It's mine. Yes. I do with what I want as a debt counselor. Uh, future payments, now you're starting to pay, goes to PDA still. And then PDA does what? All the it. money goes to PDA. Yes. Or even yeah. the first one, of course. Including the first one. Yes. So you, you as a debt counselor, you're going to get paid by PDA. Mm. Okay. You don't pay 
money directly to, to the debt counselor. Yes. If you do, something is wrong. It's not make sure. Mm -hmm. So the first 4.5 in this case pays the debt counselor. Mm -hmm. When are the collector or the creditor, please don't call the client and tell them you are not getting the money. Yes, you missed your first payment. You, you missed this month. We are not getting the money. Yeah. Then the client says, ah, but these guys, I'm paying them. They're not paying my, my creditors. Which is true. If the DC did not explain that to the client or the client chooses not to understand, mm. right? Or the creditor chooses not to understand. And the, or the creditor chooses not to comply. Mm. That reviews the problem. We pay these people, they don't pay our creditors. That's one of the complaints. Okay. But if it happens during the first two months, it's the creditor that is not complying. Mm, he's wajah. He's being hasty. We are still Ajah, we breached the process. Yeah, well, I agree. Uh, I agree with what I say. What's in your turn? Now, who's to be? Yeah, why put so his Allah? I personally pose that he remains to be a creditor from 17. He must just behave. Relax. Ratla. Eh. Yes. Because we are busy negotiating. Okay. So 4.5 client pays to the PDA. Mm. The 4.5 pays the DC. Month one. Mm. So we can say month one. Okay. Month two. Okay. Legal. Mm. All right. Legal. DC. Okay. To legal. Mm. Somebody must pay the lawyer. Yes. And as this same process is going, the DC keeps updating the NCR system. We are moving from this status to this status, this status. Like... From 17.2, it's got its own status. 17.1, it's got its own status. And, and, and. COB, we have it. Yeah. We keep, yeah. So now this one to this one to say, hi, Bo, we received all the consents. Everybody's happy to share 4.5. Mm. Mm. Okay. Now, the debt counselor can do the can have his own team to submit to the N NCT, the tribunal. Okay. Internally. Mm. They don't need to get an attorney to do that. However, some debt counselor said, we don't want to do anything with legal. We just want to focus on our debt review process. You, the attorney, we appoint you. If they, we've got all the agreements, you process the application to NCT on our behalf. If there are no, if you've got the declines, you process everything to the court. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah. So now it's a legal process, DC with legal, and it is either the the attorney with the court to start the process mm. or the NCT. So here we've got some declines. Who's declining here? The, the creditor. creditor. Yeah. Or the collect. Yeah. Here we've got all acceptances. Mm. All proposals. Have been accepted. Declines of what? Proposal. Mm -hmm. One or two. Whatever the situation is. It's open to negotiation though. Yes. Yeah. So when you go there, the magistrate will rule out. Here, the NC, the NCT would just make an order and say, oh, everything is good. Mm. Let's just make an order. Okay. This is month two. This is month two. Mm. Who's paying these guys? Mm. The client. How? I'm already paying 4.5 mm. or 8, depending on circumstances. Month two... The fees here, the 4.5 now, mm -hmm. depending on the agreement with the debt counselor and the attorney, how much the legal fees should be. Okay. 
If the legal fee is less than 4.5, PDA, the debt counselor tells PDA, second month when you get 4.5, 4.5, you would take, I don't know, 3,000 or 2,000 or 1,000. You are going to pay our legal team. Mm -hmm. The rest, check it to the bond or the, settle this account or whatever. However, right? we can't have attorneys that are overcharging. Unfortunately, that is the part that the NCR cannot to a specific point regulate. Okay. Because it's the attorney's fees. They are, of course, their own regulator and, 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 mm. and. The NCR can intervene between the business relationship between the debt counselors and the company and the attorneys as another company. However, the client can say, I, the legal fees are too much. You can query that. Yes. And say, why, why, why do why you use 10, these guys? 000? Yeah, use other, other lawyers. Yes, you know, but there's a very little that the, the client can do other than just complaining okay. to the NCR. Say, but 12000 for these fees. It's, it's too much. It's too much. But that, that is something that the clients must be aware that they that can complain. Aware. They can complain. Yes. Because yes. You, you find that we're talking with collusion and all sorts of nonsense yes. in this country because people are just making profit for the sake of profit mm. you don't want a situation where when 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 the, the dc secures a client they're already happy that they're going to get a cut from the legal fee it's business at end of the day. but that's dodgy because because you're ripping me off because you're double dipping. I'm already paying you as a DC. Yes. And you're going to get something else yes. from your conversation with the legal. It's a loophole. Big one. Big one. <laughs> yeah. But ideally, the second month, the money should go towards the legal. It's legal fees. Yes. So if the legal fees is more than 4.5, which I'm hoping it's not, mm. then the sec the f the the this second 4.5 will go towards the DC fees. Let's put context into place for a second. The yes. 4.5 is an example mm. of someone that earns 10,000 rands whose, whose debts are 7,500 rands. Mm. Negotiation is... is the monthly installment is 7.5. 7.5. But negotiation, yeah, the a debt council has, has created an environment such that this person pays 4,500. Mm. And now the legal fees... You're saying it's 4,000, right? 4,005 in this example. Mm. Let's use a different example of someone that's earning 30,000 rands. That, that, that client too. Mm. What, what are the possibilities of a higher legal fee? It shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. The, the, the fee should be the same. Irrespective of the size of the debt. Yeah. Okay. It should be the same. Yeah. It should be a fixed fee because it's the same process. Fixed fee of... What is the highest and what is the possible lowest? I've heard, I know it differs. I've heard attorneys that charge 7,000. 7, okay. You know, is that high? I've heard attorneys that charge 3.5. Okay. So it's, it's who your DC got. Yes. Um, what I also need to highlight is that there's also what we call administration fees. Of course. Like any business, mm. every month, even your account, you are paying admin mm -hmm. fee, 57 rand or something, I, I don't remember. So the administration fee would become a 5%, maximum 5% of the principal debt yes. or, or the agreed, yes. propo or the proposed uh, monthly repayment. Yes. Is it a monthly 5%? Yes. Every month? For as long as you are with this debt council and he's managing you. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now, when you talk about fees, right? We've got DC fees. We've got... Month one fees. Yes. Yes. Month one. Mm -hmm. We've got legal fees. Month two fees month two fees and hopefully does not it can't um if they they the they, they, the agreement is seven thousand and when your contribution is four point five okay it'll overlap they will just maybe deduct for the next coming two three four months just portion 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 of okay. it. the important thing is as a responsible debt counselor at that point in time um 
you you need to make sure that by the third month, whatever that is agreed with the collectors, I mean with the collectors and creditors, it it goes. Mm -hmm. And when the proposal is made, all these fees are transparent. True. So when they agree, they agree to say, oh, okay, first month we see the four point five will go to the DC. The second month we see the four point five will go to the. We mm. see that the five percent would go to now the admin. Okay. Admin, admin. This will be the DC five percent. And then we also have PDA, because they are also in business. Of course. As far as I remember, I think uh, I think it's also maximum five percent, three to five. Mm. I stand to be corrected here. They are also a business. Okay? They also can tarnish the industry. The debt counselor tells them, this is how you need to distribute the, the money, money. And they don't do that. They don't distribute. Or they distribute it um, wrongly or incorrectly, whatever the situation is. But anything can happen there. This a monthly. Mm. Don't those amounts make my overall payment as a client higher than it would have been. Example, the principal debt as a whole was 100,000 rands. Mm. That would have been paid over a year, well, two years. Mm. Um, and now the negotiation with the, between the DC and the creditors have extended that period. Ideally, it should, because yeah, once yes. you start paying You're low, stretching it longer. You're stretching it longer. True. It's still 100,000 rands in my world. Exactly same interest rate. Same interest rate. Let's, mm. let's block it at 100,000, mm. including interest rate. Now I've activated this debt review process. Mm. It now has an extra 8%, give or take. The DC monthly fees uh, plus the, uh, what you call it, the PDA fees. Mm. Uh, now it has an extra 8%. Mm. Now the total amount in simple mathematics is now 108,000 rands. Mm. That was not there. And now mm. I'm not even acknowledging compound payment because you're yes. paying it every month. So yes. it's a lot more than that. Yes. Uh, doesn't it then say this process is expensive? Because none of call it 800,000. Yes. But with this lesson, I'm now owing more. Yes. The moment you start defaulting this high price debt. Okay. Keep going. It's either this, which is regulated and properly, or legal fees, mm. where handed over, collector's fees, blah, blah, blah. Okay, got you. Judgments. So that's, so, so you, 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 somebody has to pay, actually not somebody, you have to pay as the client in the picture for someone to make sure this thing works properly. It can't be for free. It can't be for free. Yeah. The moment you default, for whatever reason, fair or unfair, mm. there's a high price to it. Whether you get a credit repair company to help you cancel mm. prescription, you need to pay them. They are professionals. They're like doctors. Mm. Isn't that you are sick? The doctor You're being say, rehabilitated. Somebody the doctor is... cannot say, ah, oh, shame, you are sick. Let's give you free. Don't Unless lie. you want to wait a long line at the government hospital. Okay. Do you, you, you get what I'm mm. saying? Mm. So at the end of the day, these are the professionals. Profit Pay making. True. It's, it's a not business. A it's not a government. It's a business. Grant. Yeah. The government is just giving you um, a consumer right mm. to have this thing done in a structured way. Mm. So this will go on monthly. Mm. So assuming this 4.5 covers all the legal fees for the attorney. For the NCT, the fee is around 500 rand okay. if it's done internally by the debt counselor. Mm. That's what the laws, the debt the, the review guidelines. Says. Okay. Should it happen that here, the responsible debt counselor picked up a reckless lending? By the client? Yes. Reckless lending is to say, Oh, 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 this creditor gave you a credit card or a store account mm. or a loan of 30,000 when 
you did not qualify to get that credit. So who's reckless in this case? The creditor and me as the as the the, the client in this case. I'm equally as reckless. It's going to be found here. Okay. When the attorney takes the matter. Mm. They can charge an additional um reckless mm. lending. A maximum of 1.5 per client, not per account, per client. So if you found two or three reckless lending issues. What is the point of that payment? They found it and then what? The court, the attorney takes it to court to query it. Mm. If it's creditor one, two, and three, they give you reckless, they give you credit recklessly. Mm. Going back to 100K mm. combined. The total debt for this reckless account is about 60,000. Okay. This guy wins. The, the lawyer? At the court. The magistrate. He, he wins this. The reckless lending. He says, he says, company A wasn't supposed to give this person this, 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 yeah. uh, this loan. Yeah. And, and the court agrees. The court agrees. The court can say, cancel it all. Whoa. Or... 50% of it. Okay. We see that Lua and I as a client, you like the Yeah. And we Papa. No matter. They told you. You know? Yes. They enticed you. You got lured yeah. and you, you took it. Yes. They were not supposed to. You were not supposed yes. to. But if it's a successful case or cases, it should benefit the, the client. The client. How often does that happen? Not a lot. Really? Mm, I don't think most debt counselors do that, of which I would really love to see more debt counselors doing this reckless lending thing. So you're saying that they, a part of it, they could be denying their clients an extra benefit? Yeah. Because we live in a society where you get a call every day for a loan, every single day. Mm. If your phone, like me, I've had my number for the past 20 years. You see? I my number is known. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> and and I get a call yeah. for a loan mm. almost every second day. Yeah. So I can only imagine that there is a lot of reckless lending that's happening out there. Yeah. Blacklisted, welcome. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm. You're black you're blacklisted. You are the one we want. Mm. I've seen that. Yeah. That's reckless. Responsible debt counseling process. Would Should. say, yeah, let's take advantage of that. Yeah. And go and, and negotiate on your behalf. Yeah. Or the attorneys should yeah. play their part and get rid of this thing. Yes. That's why we, it's very important to have discussions like this. And are doing a very good work. Mm, this is, yeah. When, when, when to going back to saying, is this really an expensive thing? Mm. It's costly. There's a it's cost. Costly. There's a cost. Yeah. Now, the extension of the program maximum can be five years. Oh. I always say to people, if you're under debt review, how long you're going to remain under debt review is your responsibility. Okay. What does that mean? If your finances get better, remember I talk about debt counseling, imagine thing this. Mm. So if, you know, see if for some more, yeah, see, mm. And, and, and then your career or even if things a lot or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, well, that's an exceptional yes. case. But even if things stay the same yes. and you're just covering your 4.5, you're honoring it diligently. Within five years, because this proposal talks about five years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But probably you get married to a very rich man. Hey, or whatever. Know. Where are they, Chomi? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you win a lot, or you get a promotion, or you start a business, but your finances improves, mm -hmm. right? Pay more. Sit down, build a good relationship with the debt counselor. Yeah. Say, you know what? I've got 2000 extra this month. Which account can we settle? Have that relationship. Mm, let's move it quickly. Yes. Two. Be in control of your debt counseling process. Mm -hmm. Don't just get there and say, yeah, the debt, the debt counselor will do. And then, no, no, no. Be in charge. 
take control of this thing. Mm. Make sure you communicate, demand monthly uh, statements that shows all these payments. See what's happening. Mm. You know, um, plan to say, oh, okay, I see this is the, these are the negotiations, these are the acceptances and all that. Now, I plan to pay more or settle this account in the next coming three months or six months or a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pay more. Yes, because now you can also see the picture properly. Yes. Yeah. When I get my bonus end of the month. I'm getting rid of one. It doesn't need to be five years. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to be locked in for five years. For as long as your financial um, uh, uh, muscle tighten up. Mm. Mm. Why not? It gets stronger and stronger. If you find that along the way you are able to um, manage your, 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 your living expenses, cut down there and there, why not? Mm -hmm. No more restaurants. This is, the 4.5 is just to come things and get things regulated and protected and, 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 and. Why do you think uh, this process gets such a, a negative uh, rap. Why do is it that people continue to to uh, to paint a negative picture of this? Let's start with the client. Yeah, client being unrealistic. I think we touched a little bit about that, and client not being control, and client not seeing the importance of paying more, or paying, or even paying or defaulting. But that's not the fault of the process. The fault of the client. Yes. Debt counselor, not doing their work, not keeping the timelines, not educating the client, not explaining the process. Remember this process, like I explained, for mm -hmm. the two months. If debt counselor did not invest in educating and informing the client, that they will also be locked, not, I don't want to say locked in, that the process will go for five years and they won't get credit, blah, blah, blah. If the creditor, misbehave mm -hmm. and harass the client, immediately the process is a flaw. If the client does not conceptualize that there's always a price to pay for every professional services and that when you start paying less, obviously you're going to take longer. Mm -hmm. Going back to unrealistic. I could have you given me permission to say it like it is. Yes. Yes. Unrealistic expectations. Exactly. Going yeah. back to say, ah, I don't want to pay rent anymore. Oh, uh, I want to buy Now it. this thing has locked me up. King King David Studio Podcast. He, they've not even started with the debt review. Mm, mm. Analysis. Already they're telling you in advertisement, we will cancel the interest rate. So that you're saying that's a red flag? That's a red flag. Yeah. How to identify debt review scams. So if you say, oh, uh, that counselor, Ella, didn't help me, blah, blah. If this debt counselor can prove that this is what they followed, um, they have a right to claim 75%. If you go to debt counselor B and say, can we resume this thing, mm. right? You need to pay this one first before they can release you. King, King David Studio Podcast.